Welcome back. We're continuing our setup of a highly available horizontally scaled GitLab instance. Following the diagram you see, with the exception of we'll have one load balancer, two application servers, and three Redis servers. Today we're going to be covering the NFS server and the load balancer setup. Uh, this is on GitLab 11.11.3, but what you're about to see kind of works for almost any GitLab version. So to get started with the NFS server, what we're going to need to first do is set this server up to be ready for NFS. To do that, we need to first go ahead and disable leases enabled. We can do this by simply echoing in a zero into this file. From there, we can go ahead and do a sysctl-w to set it up right now for our session. And with that, we're going to go ahead and install the NFS kernel server package. With that complete, we need to go ahead and enable the kernel module NFS. To do that, we can do mod probe NFS. With that done, we want to go ahead and enable that systemctl service by doing systemctl enable NFS dash kernel dash server. Now with this, we want to go ahead and make the directory we're going to be working with, which will, in this case, be home GitLab. Now after this, we're going to need to go ahead and edit etc exports. We can go ahead and delete what's here. because we don't really need that. What we're gonna instead do is paste in the configuration we do need, which is telling it the folder we're gonna be working with, home GitLab, and then the IPs of the servers accessing it. In this case, it'll be web one and web two, so there's the internal IP addresses for that. And then we're gonna pass in these mount options, read, write, sync, no root, squash. With that, we can go ahead and save the file, and we're gonna go ahead and kick the NFS service to apply those changes. Now next we need to go ahead and make some folders before we go any further. So we're gonna make the .ssh folder. We're gonna make the GitLab Rails uploads folder. We're gonna make the GitLab Rails shared folder. We're gonna make the git data folder. And we're gonna make the GitLab CI builds file, or folder, sorry. These are core components of GitLab, so it's important that they already exist to help prevent any issues. Now with that, NFS is set up so we can move over to our load balancer. Now with the load balancer, we've, we just simply need to set up HA proxy. So we can do an app git install HA proxy and wait for that to complete. With that completed, we want to go ahead and enable that system CTL service. So it's there on reboot. And now we're going to go ahead and edit the Etsy HA proxy, HA proxy config. Now with this, we need to go ahead and paste in our configuration. So I'm gonna delete everything since I have the globals there, but you can mostly leave those the same. The key here is we're gonna set up a front end. We're gonna call it local server, because I'm not very imaginative. We're gonna bind it to the public IP of the HA proxy server and to port 80 with mode HTTP. And we're gonna tell it the default backend is my web servers. Then we're gonna set up a backend my web servers, mode HTTP, balance round robin, option forward four, set up some headers, we're going to set up a check, and then we're going to set up the servers, web1, web2, and give them the internal IP addresses as well. Now, a lot of this is highly configurable, so you can change this to fit your, your needs. With those settings in place, before we do anything, we want to make sure that they're valid. So we're going to call haproxy-c-f, and then give it the config file. And we should see configuration file is valid. With that, we can go ahead and restart the service to apply it. And with that, we're done with our HA proxy and our NFS setup and are ready for the next step, which will be our application servers.